Everybody get a ticket when you came in? Let's get this party started. Yes. We have Mr. Micaiah here. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Micaiah. He will be um, the helping giver us. of gifts. That's right. So let's get started. We're going to do some giveaways this morning. By the looks of it, I think we all might get a gift. We all this might morning. get a gift. I'm going to keep checking mine. All right. All right. Our first number is 92146. 92146. So what's the last three? One, four, six. One, four, six. Somebody's got to have it. Emma. Woo, 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 woo. Go, Emma. All Emma. right. We'll take, yes, give your ticket to Mr. Micaiah. Go ahead and open your gift. Show us what you have this morning. Our next winner is ticket 150. 150. Yes. Yes. I love this. Everybody's going to be a winner today, I feel like it, because I mean. Emma got knives. Emma got knives. Um, we'll have parental control with Mom? That. Mom, is it okay? Everyone. Is it? Oh, and it's a leopard print. Le Melissa, did you see this? Animal print knives. Animal print knives. Come on, those are nice. Wow. You going to learn how to cook or something? All right. Our next number is 141. 141. Come Woo on, go, Miss Rebecca. Rebecca. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Kelsey got some mixing bowls and measuring spoons. I love that. Because I like to cook sometimes. Ooh, that's a gift I wrapped. That's a pretty wrapping paper. It's pretty. All right, our next one is 131. Who's got that? One, three, one. Josh. One, Amanda. three. Miss Amanda back there on the camera. Come on oh, down. We're going to need you to come yes. down. Get your gift. Come on. Get your gift. What did you get, Rebecca? Let's Rebecca, see. show the camera. Yes. A wonder Front and center. I love this. I've always oh, wanted it's to so try cool. one of those. I have one. Are it's really good. good. <gasps> I make bacon. Who loves so bacon? So Rebecca said she's going to cook bacon. for us. <laughs> Amanda, come show the camera your gift. Yes. Come we on, Amanda. We have to know what you got. <gasps> what this is, is a what lovely is gift Ooh, basket. a gift set. I see a Target gift bath, a gift card. A mug. Girl, you got some good some stuff. Snacks. Okay, I see you. That basket's cute, too. And Starburst. <laughs> she got Starburst. I might come see you later. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Did you, where are we at? I didn't grab one, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm encouraged by the I gifts. <laughs> 133, 133. Hey, 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 come, hey, on, come down. on, get your gift. Don't be shy. Yes. yes. Thank you, Josh. And look at her outfit. It's so cute. It matches your outfit. All right. Next gift is 138. Who is 138? 134. Who's 138? It's got to be somebody. <gasps> Some pants. Yes, Martha Phyllis. Stewart. Who is 138? Ooh. It's got to be someone. Mom, we have tickets to 138. Somebody's is Amy coming down? Is Amy 138? Oh, it's Amy. Amy. She just doesn't want to talk. You know what? For Amy's that, you're not getting anything. That's it. No. You got us up here yelling 138. Ooh, Magnolia soap. <laughs> Amy, you're supposed to show the, the camera. Okay. She got a gift from She's Magnolia like, soap. Go. All right. Good. One, four, three. One, four, three. Woo, woo, woo. Come yes. on down. Come on down. You are the next winner. What is this? On, the price is right for you. On Covenant Women Surrendered. <laughs> All right. Next one is one, three, four. One, I am three, one, three, four. four. I knew that was like a familiar yes, number. Yes, Miss Katie. Wait. They're going to think it's rigged. It's not rigged. She won. I'll put it in this pocket. Okay, put it in that pocket. Done with Katie gets a gift. I get a gift. Whoop, whoop. Thank you, Makaya. Ooh, what's that? Uh, <gasps> I got the gift yeah. that Sonia the donated. Gift. The gift. Bath and Body Thank Works. Thank you, Sonia, for your donation. And two more lotions. I'm so blessed. Thank you so much. All right, next one is 139. 139. Come on, 139. Who, who, who you at? Who you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? 139? 139? It's got to be somebody in here. 139, nobody? 
Is there anybody? Renee's in the kitchen. My mom has Renee's ticket. Okay. Jenna, do you have 139? Miss Kirby. 139 is it's got to be somebody. I didn't get a ticket. One three nine. All right. We'll hold on to it. We'll hold, we'll hold on, on to it because it. it's got to be somebody. One four seven. One four seven. Yay! Come on up, Miss Vicky. Woo! Go ahead and open it up. Let's see. I love opening presents. We have a couple more tickets. Okay. Ooh. Oh. A muffin. Muffin tin or some cupcakes. I'll take some cupcakes. Cupcakes, yes. How many gifts does that? All right, our next one is 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. Ladies, it's got to be somebody in here. 140. 140. It's got to be somebody. Nobody? Is there anybody in the restroom? In the, in the, in the kitchen? No? All right. I got... Okay. You're at six. Here. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we've done ten gifts. Got eight more. You got that? Yeah. You want to do our next one? All right, we got one, three, five, ladies. One, three, five. Go, Jenna! Jenna, come on down. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Next gift is one, sunshine. four, two. One, four, two. One, four, two. We got a winner. We got a winner. Ooh, ooh, come on down. We got a winner. Jenna, what did you get? A crock pot? Hey! Ooh. I'll be coming over later for that dinner. <laughs> All right, you. next number is 151. 151. Woo woo! We got a winner! Miss Annie, come on! Camden, Camden, what did you win, Camden? Oh, nice. Mason Jar set. Mason Jar there set. We go. Those are fun. Next winner is 136. You got a picnic. One, three, six. She got the picnic baskets. Yes, Ms. Melissa. She's like, what am I getting? One, three, six. Anybody? Did you get your ticket, Melissa? You sure? One, three, six. I know you sat it down. Did you donate it? Nobody? One, three, six. Okay. We've got one, three, two. One, three, two. One, three, two. It's got to be somebody. One, Woo three, two. Come on, Mama won. We get what we get and we don't throw fits. Hey, we got a big, we, we can use that. No, we can, mom, it's okay. We can re-gift it to somebody. It, but thank God, a blessing is a blessing. A blessing is a blessing. <laughs> Okay, wait, how many is, how, let's count again. Sorry ladies, we keep losing count. I got one and I think you put a whole bunch. Okay, sorry. Okay, that's 13. So this is number 14, 148. Come on down, that's my sister. Krista. That's number 14. Here's number 15, Krista. Congratulations. Girlfriend, I love your hoops. Oh my god. <laughs> hoops gosh. for days. I'm just see her hoops. Oh, yeah. I love them. They're sparkling. All right, Miss Katie. We got 137. 137. 137. 137. 137. That's Renee. She was holding on to Renee's ticket. Renee is in the kitchen cleaning up. Uh, so thank you, Miss Renee, if you can hear us. This is for Renee. All right, and then, so that's 15. We got number 16. 144. 
One, four, four, come on, Miss Sonia. Sonia. Miss Sonia. Good job. All right, one, four, nine. One, four, nine. One, four, nine. Oh, she, she got, got a got knife, knives, too. She got knives. She's going to be cutting it up in the <laughs> kitchen. All right, um, how, that was how many gifts? 16. What tickets do you have? What's your number? Did you say that from last night or did you get a new one? A new one. What's, What's your number, Miss? We up. How? How odd. I am She's so like, sorry. I've been watching. I've been watching. Let's give them both a gift. Woo, woo, woo. Come on down. Come on down. I'm sorry, ladies. Double, double, right? That's right. Double, double blessing. Your trouble. Uh, double the trouble. <laughs> I'm sorry. Miss Victoria's over here, like, all right. Carefully she had to watch it out. Yes. <laughs> She's like, what did we get? What did we get? All right. And then. Woo! Do you like that? Soap puppy soap dispensers. Aww. <laughs> That's from Pioneer Woman. Oh, my yes, god. Yes, those are Pioneer Woman soap Matching dispensers. Set. It's a Two set. Two of them. That's right. Okay, hold on a second. I want to count how many women we have in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And then we had some of you ladies that won last night that didn't get tickets this morning. So that was all the tickets that we have. That's all the gifts yes. we have for today. Do you Woo feel blessed? Amen. So come tonight. We'll have new tickets for you at the yes. door. But if you won today, which is pretty much all of you, Except for Miss Joy. Make sure you come tonight then. Remember, we're going to have some more drawings. So, praise What's God. What's the big drawing tomorrow? Tomorrow? Tonight. Oh my. Tonight. What What's are the you big doing drawing tomorrow? tomorrow? I'm going to sleep tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I'm coming back. No. I'll, probably, I'll be here Saturday morning to no clean up the church here. and everything. <laughs> no, we're going to come clean church okay. Saturday morning. We'll, we'll clean the church We'll clean tomorrow. the church for Sunday. So what's tonight? Tonight, what's being we given? have um, two special gifts tonight. Of course, we have the coach bag From that Pastor, Pastor Tammy, Tammy is going to give away tonight. We have the names already if you registered before April 20th. Yes. If you didn't, so sorry. Better luck next time. I'm kidding. Yes. And then we are going to have another. Should we announce? Okay, we can't tell you. It's our little secret. You're just going to have to come and see. Yes, come on. It is very it's big. It's very big. Very it's very big. big. Um, if you, That's all I'm going to say. It's big. It's really nice. I want it, but um, it's okay. I'm not. It's all right. <laughs> Somebody will be blessed. That's right. And we'll come to your house for dinner, right? <laughs> Pastor Tammy. Girls, ready to praise the Lord today? Yes. Let's move into the center area. Let's, you know, let's move in. Since we have a little smaller group this morning, that's okay. Some people are sleepy heads and they can't wake up. And then some people have to work and it's okay. But I'm glad that you guys are here. It's awesome. So let's move in closer together and let's just enjoy this time and worship the Lord together. This is such an anointed time and I'm so glad. Yes. I'm so glad that we can be here together. That sounds altogether different. <laughs> but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. He says rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Hallelujah. That means he gives me the choice. He doesn't make me do anything, but it's my choice. And if I choose to do what he says to do, then I'm going to be blessed for it. I walk in the blessing of the Lord. I walk in victory. 
Hallelujah. Can you ladies move over here to the center section? There's, there's some seats here, maybe on the front or even in the second and third. Let's all move in closer to Let's fill all these little seats up here in the front first few, few seats. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Well, let's go ahead and let's give God praise today. Hallelujah. Come on and let's shout for joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I choose you today. Joy is my portion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Glory to God. I rejoice in you because you are worthy. You are faithful. I magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go ahead and let's hit joy. to rejoice how our soul is filled with his goodness 
Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. It's true. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands to Jesus because he is our strength. Yes, he is the rock on which we stand. He is the sure foundation. Just like those words say, when all around you is failing, when it's unsure, when it feels like it's sinking, he will not fail us. Thank you, Jesus. He will not fail us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The problem is sometimes as people, they get their eyes on the problem. They get their eyes on the situation. And, and you know, it is screaming. There's no doubt situations and problems and things and people scream. But you know what? His word will not fail. It never has failed. Hallelujah. It's not yet. It will not fail. Yes, There's no right. yet to it. It will not fail. Never fail. He will not fail. And when, when anything starts to come at us, we need to go first to the Lord. Go first to his word. Say, what does your word say, Lord? Build yourself up on the word of God in his presence because his word, his promises are true. It's the only thing that's true. It's the only thing that will never fail us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. Let's build ourselves up right now. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. He said, Tete Livabosa. He said, Livaboshika. Ambara Tarada Babose. Moshi Babobanane Kese. Mombora Tia Lavabose. Mabara Tete Levo Site de Deshe. He raised the Bosha. Rasa Lavabo Comba Rate de Day. He Livabomba de Day. He said, Idea Basha. Hallelujah, Barasso Kosha, Arasi Kilevo Bosete, Erasi Boshan and Eresete. Come on, lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. That's your strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's your anchor. Boshikaradarabasa, Boshadarabase, Moteradisa, Mambaradise, Maradia Shora Karadarabasa. We worship you. We worship you, Ishalovo Sika, Resuma Nani de Dondora Tarababase, E Shabahala Satarate. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Ghost that speaks to us. Yes, it gives us confirmation, that gives us peace, that gives us strength, that gives us joy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Sika Lababosa. Glory to God. Now just worship him and thank him. Hallelujah. Everything that you just prayed, you're going to walk out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that your word is reality in my life. I thank you, Lord, that your promises are sure. Your promises are true. You will never fail me. Thank you, Jesus. You're always with me, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus, that I embody the word of God. I walk on this earth, and I embody your word. I embody your promises. Yes, your promises come to true, come, come to fruition. Your, your promises are true, and they will not fail. And your promises will always come to pass. Your promises will always come to pass, Lord, when I choose to obey them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We choose to obey your word today, Lord. 
We choose to walk in the fullness of your word, to walk in the fullness of your spirit. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, even if it's only a remnant of, of people on this earth, I thank you, Lord, that I am part of that remnant. I am part of that remnant that chooses to walk with you, Lord, that chooses to walk firmly with you, Lord, to, work, to walk solid with you, Lord God, to know that every word that you say is true. Every word that you say is literal, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. How many of you believe the word of God is truth? It's literally truth. It's the only thing. It's the only thing. The only thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he created us. And he put his word here through the holy word of God, through the Bible. But his spirit is inside of us. And his spirit bears witness with that truth, with the words on those pages. When you read those words on the page, they come alive. And when you speak them and then you act on them, there's nothing like it. There's nothing that will produce more fruit in your life than when you act on the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad I came today. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that you came today. Praise the Lord. I'm going to turn it over to my, my lovely daughter, Jordan, and she's going to minister for a few minutes to us. Hallelujah. Can she get a mic, please? Oh, sorry. Mala's not here tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. We'll give her the yellow one. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many are excited to be here today? Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm telling you right now, the ones that decided to come and wake up early and do what needed to be done are going to be blessed because of it. Amen. And you're going to receive someone else's portion. <laughs> Double portion for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm excited to be able to share again today on a seed time and harvest message. And really, it's awesome because this message really piggybacks off of last night. So if you were here last night and you heard the message that I was sharing having to do with the blessing of the Lord, a harvest of generosity was the title of the message, this really goes with that. So I said that to say, if you heard the message last night and, it, and you, didn't, you didn't like it or there is some stuff that you were just like, I just don't know if I can, I can agree with that. I don't know if I can back that up. Well, you better get ready today because the title of this message is, I want you to repeat this with me. Say, too strong for poverty. Too strong for poverty. That is the title of this message. So if you want to write that big in your notes or however you're doing, but I'd rather you just get it inside of you, get it in your spirit. Because you can take as many notes as you want on a piece of paper, but if you didn't actually get it in you, it's not going to do anything. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua 1, and a lot of this that I'm reading is the NLT. I have a couple other translations, and if it's different, I'll try to tell you. And also, I do go through a lot of scripture when I speak. My husband always makes fun of me because he's like, you're like a, a bullet for scriptures. So sometimes he's like, I think people want to write it down, but then they can't because it's just like boom, 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 all these scriptures. So if there's something that I said and you missed it and you felt like that really went with whatever you were wanting to write down, let me know later and I will t I'll try to tell you what it was if you missed it, if I went too fast. But in Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, I'm going to start there. It says, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land that I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north. From the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Including the, all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live 
as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in all you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Do you notice there are three different times he's telling them to be strong and to be courageous? Why would he tell them that they needed to be strong and courageous? What is the title of this message? Too strong for poverty. So you might say, well, I don't have a poverty mindset. You know, I went to Bible school or I don't have a poverty mindset. You know, I go to church. I'm a Christian. You know, what's funny is there's actually so many Christians that I've encountered, maybe not necessarily people in this room because I don't know everybody, but I probably am preaching to some people in this room because the Lord gave me this specific message for today. But there's been people that I've talked to before, even Christians, people that, you know, have known the Lord for a long time, and they don't even realize what they are saying. They don't even realize what they're doing and that they actually do have a poverty mentality and a poverty mindset. And it's about stuff that they are constantly saying and constantly doing. And maybe it's something they've just done for so long they don't even realize what's happening. So he says three different times to be strong and to be courageous. He says in verse 6, be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess the land. So he's trying in, the, in verse 3 through verse 9, he is trying to get a message to them. Like if you will listen, if you will pay attention, and if you will do as I am instructing you to do, this is what you can walk in. And this is what will happen. Because he says be strong and be courageous, for you you are the one who will lead these people to possess the lamb. And then on and then it goes on to say at the very end, this is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you will go. He's telling them, you have to do this. I need you to be strong and courageous for what you're about to step into. I need you to be strong and courageous for what you're about to walk into is what he's telling them. Ephesians um, chapter 6, 10 through 11 says, A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. You know, we just sang a song about the firm foundation. That is so important that you get that in you and you know that you have to, especially, especially in the day and the world that we live in, you have to know who your foundation is in. Is it in the world or is it in the word of the Lord? Because if it's in the world, your life's going to look a whole lot differently. You might think, oh, well, you know, I just watch the news because I want to be updated on what's going on. But what you don't realize is that's literally garbage coming into you. It's garbage being filled on the inside of you and instead of the word of God. Because really, if you want to be honest, you could take that time and invest it into the word of God or invest it listening to a message or something that's going to build you up, not something that's going to tear you down. Because I don't need to listen to the news to know that the world's going to hell in a handbasket, okay? I don't need to listen to the news to find out what the latest and greatest is that, you know, President Biden's office is doing. I know what's going on, okay? I have a fairly good idea of what's taking place, okay? So he's telling us in Joshua that you must be strong. You must be strong and be courageous. So that passage of scripture is really the foundation here of this message. But in Isaiah 40, 31, it says, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. 
You know, I love that scripture because I know as women, you t- we want to take on so many hats. We want to take on so many roles, and we're trying to, it feels like we're trying to do all the things. We're trying to do a job of five people, or, you know, you have guests staying at your home, and you want to entertain people, or you want to make sure that they're fed and that the house is clean and it's taken care of, and especially if you have young children, because I have young kids, so I know it's a constant work. It's constantly this and this and this going on, and not only do I have young kids, but I'm a pastor of the church, and I'm not just, oh, the pastor's wife. No, I do things with my husband at the same time. We are both ministering together, pastors together, and it's funny because there's some members in our church now, but at the time when I first met them a couple years ago, they weren't members, and in the area that we're in, it's like not really, it's either you're a woman, the pastor, like the pastor is actually a woman and the husband is not a pastor, or it's just the husband, the man that's a pastor, and the woman it just works another job or is not even really known in the church. But the church doesn't even see them as a pastor. So I'm introducing myself to her, and I knew I wasn't going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm pastor so-and-so or whatever. I was just like, hi, I'm Jordan, you know, because that's just the way I introduce myself to people. And um, she was just asking, because we were at a kid's birthday party, and she was just asking, like, oh, um, you know, how do you know so-and-so? And And I was like, oh, well, you know, we go to church with them. (laughs) I didn't say, oh, they go to our church. I was just like, yeah, we go to church with them. And that was all I said. And she was like, wait a second. Is your husband the pastor of that church, um, you know, the River Church Cincinnati? And I said, yeah, yeah, that's my husband. And um, I said, yeah, we're, I said, yeah, that we're the pastors of the church. That's just what I said just came out of my mouth. wasn't even thinking. I just said, yeah, we're the pastors of that church. And she was like, wait, so you're a pastor too? And I said, yes. And she goes, so, like, not just your husband, but you are too? And I said, "Uh uh-huh, yeah. We both speak. We both, you know, do things. And she was like, wow, wow. Like, she was just, like, really taken back by that. And it was just funny because, you know, I don't really know where I was going with that story. But anyway, so it was just funny because, um, you know, we're both doing the same things, but it's like a full, it was like a foreign concept to her. Okay, now I know where I was going. So anyway, as women, we take on so many roles. So that's like one thing that I do too. You know, there's so many roles that we do where at the end of the day, we're tired. You know, our, our physical bodies feel tired. Maybe we've exhausted ourselves by just talking to our kids or talking at work or talking and doing all these things, repeating ourselves over and over. Sometimes it feels like, right? But it says in Isaiah, but those who trust in the Lord, That's something to note there. Those that trust in the Lord. It doesn't say that those that trust in themselves, those that trust in their own good works, those that trust that what they're doing one day is going to get them to a certain level or to a certain place. It says those that trust in the Lord. Those that trust in the Lord will find new strength. Not some strength that they had before, but new strength. So that means that if you had something that was going on yesterday and then you come to the next day and it's like another problem or another another situation, the Lord is going to give you new strength. It says he's going to give you new strength. And then it says they will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in the final outcome. It says that I have thoughts for peace. It says for welfare and peace. Welfare and peace. That's talking about the blessing. And in verse 13, it says, Then you will seek me, inquire for, and require me as a vital necessity, and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. I read this scripture last night, and in another translation, it says that when you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. When you look for me with everything in you, when you're really truly hungering after the things of the Lord, when you're really truly hungry, hungering after his word, you're going to find him. It doesn't, it doesn't say that if you search for him, it's going to be this long process and I have to do all these steps. No, it says in his word that the entrance of his word brings light. That means when you open up his word and you read it, revelation knowledge comes to you. When you open up his word and you read it, you see something like you never saw before. That's what it means when it says the, the entrance of his word is what's bringing the light. 
So it doesn't matter where you've come from. I just want to tell you today, it doesn't matter where you've come from, your background, your family, how you've been brought up, or maybe maybe you had a great upbringing. Maybe let's talk about on the other side. Maybe you had a great upbringing, a great home, or whatever, but maybe it was the second half of your life or part that just kind of was seeming like it was going downhill. So it doesn't matter where you've come from. You know, you might have come from a place where it's like your whole family was poor. That's just how you grew up. Your whole family was poor. You know, you just constantly were, it was like uh, getting all the off brands or whatever, you know. Like you can never get like the, the, the regular brand of cereal. You always had to get the off brand or, you know, you had food stamps or whatever. And maybe I'm not talking to anybody in this room, but maybe you know of someone that's like this, right? Maybe you've come from that. Maybe no one has ever broken above the poverty line in your family. Maybe no one has ever broken above that part of going over the top. It's just been like this, just this level. Because, you know, what's, what's funny is I encounter this a lot with people where it's like they're doing good, you know. They've got, a, they've got jobs and they're doing well. You know, they're able to, you know, take care of their family. But it's like this line. It just feels like this cap. It's like they just really can't get past this part. And they hear about people talking about the blessing. They hear about these things, but they don't understand. It's like something's not clicking. Something's not making sense of, okay, how can I really get over this? You know, I'm good, you know, and I'm fine. I'm taken care of. I can provide food for my family and and, and clothes for my kids. You know, it's not like we're running around without the basic necessities, but I know there's more. I just don't know how to get it. I know there's more. I just don't know how to achieve it. I know that I can have more and see more, but they just get to this place and it's this comfortable place. It's this comfortable place. And it's like they just get they just get warm and comfortable and they're like, I just don't want to move. I just don't want to do anything because it's, it's not really bad, but it's not really good either. It's not really great either. So then they get complacent and they think, oh, well, I don't need to learn anymore. I already know it all. Or, or you know, I don't want to, I don't want to apply anything like this, like it says in the word of God anymore, because I'm good, you know, I've, I've gotten to this certain place. But there is so much more for people, especially the righteous person that chooses to walk in his word and walk in his ways. There is so much more. There is so much more. There's no ceiling with the Lord. There's no cap with him. Well, I talked about last night, and I said that we are the ones that put the limits on God. We are the ones that put the limit on him. He wants to do so much more, but we have to let him do it. So maybe no one in your family has broken above that line. Or maybe, you know, you come from a family where no one's owned a car or no one's owned a home. Or maybe you have come from a, a place where it's just like normal just to be in uh, thousands and thousands of dollars of debt. Maybe that is normal. Maybe that's normal, and that's just a level of where things have been stopped. But today, it's going to break off your life. I'm telling you, today, when you walk out the door, if you choose to believe it, it's going to break off your life. And whatever ceiling that you thought that you were at, it's going to be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what the Lord has called me to do, and not just here today, but called me to do, he's called me to set my generation free and to let them know that they can walk in freedom. They can have the fire of God. They can walk in the blessing of the Lord. So I'm here today to break the back off of poverty on your life. Because there's people that think, oh, I've gotten to a certain place. I'm good. No, because you think like that, there needs to be something that's broken off your life because you're never going to be able to get over here unless you do this first. So these are the steps that you need to take in order to see that broken off of your life. So if you believe that, I want you to shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Galatians 3, I want you to turn with me really quick to Galatians 3. And I just came out of a conference um, at our church called Redeemed. And the Lord gave me that can I just put this right here? I'm not sure what this is for. The Lord gave me the, the name of that conference, Redeemed, because the Lord has given me a revelation on what his redemptive power means, what it means to truly be redeemed from the curse of the law. And I think so many people think with that subject, I'm not even going to get into all this today, but I think so many people think with that subject, being redeemed, it's just with um, sickness and disease. But it's not. It's not just sickness and disease. It's actually knowing that you've been redeemed from poverty. You've been redeemed from lack. 
And that, it, it pertains that too with the curse of the law. So Galatians 3, and I'm going to read um, here in verse 13, it says, But Christ rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing. With the same blessing that he promised Abraham so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. That's what he wants. So you have to see God's blessing and his favor upon your life. You have to see it, and you see it through his word. You see through what he says by his word. Because how good would it be if we came up here, the ministers this weekend, or Pastor Jay and Tammy, and they just get up here, and they're just telling you a good revelation. Oh, I heard this thing the other day. And they're just, it's like, really, it's just this motivational message. There's no back, there's no, um, nothing backed up by the scripture, nothing backed up by the word of God. They, there's no testimony. To, that they can say behind it, that would be that would be literally the same as it, something going in one ear and coming out the other. It does no good for you. It adds no fruit to your life. So in order to see these things in your life, you have to back it up by the word of God, which is why I give so many scriptures. So if people think, oh, well, that's just an idea she had. No, it's actually from the word of God. And I'm going to relate it back to what the word says. Amen. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish. People literally will die to their grave thinking that they've got stuff all figured out when really if they would have just you know, done some research or opened the word of God to know what his word says, then they wouldn't have experienced those things in their life. It says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So that should tell you one thing. I need to start reading. I need to start knowing what it says and applying it to my life. Because where you struggle in your life is where you're unlearned. Do you realize that? If you're constantly struggling in an area, if you're constantly battling sickness, it feels like you're always sick or something bad is always happening to you, then you need to open up the word and say, okay, how can I know that I'm healed? How can I know that I'm blessed? How can I know that I don't have to be attacked constantly? I'm tired of hearing people, especially on social media, it's literally the worst, where people, it's like they feel like it's a diary. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't want to hear what you feel like you're constantly being attacked by some spiritual demon. Open up the word of God. And it's funny because it's literally Christians. It's people, oh, I'm being attacked. I'm being so attacked. I need help. And I really want to write on there and be like, uh, here's the word. Have you tried opening up the word? Or even people will say, oh, having questions and all this stuff. Like, how do I deal with this problem or the whatever? It's not even a problem. It's like a question about the word of God. But then I'm like thinking to myself, like literally, I just saw this the other day. They're asking a question about something in the word of God. And I'm thinking, if they would really just open up the word and read the word, then they would answer their own question. It's like it just doesn't make sense in my mind. But anyway, that's another message. <laughs> But God doesn't want to just let you out of poverty. He doesn't want to just take you out of poverty. He wants to do more. He wants to set you high above, high above all the nations of the world. Just like it says in Deuteronomy, just like it says in Deuteronomy 28, it says that he will set you high above all the nations of the world, and they will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord. That's what it says. Deuteronomy 15, 6 says, you will rule many nations, but they won't rule you. That means that you will be the ruler, the leader of nations. And that, just, that means people too. They will, be, they will be ruling under you because you're ruling over them. That's what he wants to do. The Lord your God will bless you as he has promised. You will lend money to many nations, but you will never need to borrow. <laughs> you will rule many nations, but they will never rule over you. And it's extremely important, too, who you surround yourself with. And I can't, I can't get away from this message without talking about this particular part, too. It is extremely, vitally important who you surround yourself with. Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get into trouble. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get into trouble. You need to make a point 
to seek out the people in the body of Christ, to seek out ministers, to seek out people who are actually doing something for the kingdom of God, who are shaking and moving and doing things for the Lord. You know, I think that people think, oh, well, there's a, there's a pastor in front of the title, so it's okay to listen. No, it's not. I've heard so many people, and even in this day and age, so many people that have a title, if you will, above their name, but it's really garbage. It's trash, and it's crap, and you need to stop listening to it. I don't know who that's for, but just because there's a title of a pastor or a minister or a prophet, if they're not speaking the word of God, if there's no demonstration of the fire and the Holy Ghost, then it's, it's got to go. It's got to go, and you got to stop listening to it. You have to make a point to, to be around these people, to seek these people out. 1 Corinthians 15, says, do not be deceived and misled. Why would it say do not be deceived and misled? Because the enemy comes to try to lead you in the wrong way. It says evil companionships, communion, associations. It says that in parentheses, corrupt and depraved good manners and morals and characters. It says do not be deceived and misled. That means that he's going to try to come and to lead you in the wrong way. So you need to know and get a grip on what's going on and say, oh, no, that's not, I'm not going to go that way. I'm not going to listen to them over there. That's the wrong thing. You must connect yourself to people that not only carry the anointing, but are doing something about it. And are not only are carrying the anointing, but also are organized at the same time. And you might say, well, what does that mean? You need to be around people that carry the anointing and that are organized at the same time to maximize the impact that you're going to have. You have to maximize the impact. Because if not, what's going to happen is you'll just be stuck to dead religious people. You'll just be stuck to these dead religious people that aren't going anywhere that are like, oh, no, I go to church on Sunday and I'm good. Oh, at 11 o'clock, oh, it's, it's time for me to go. I better, I got to go to the buffet before I'm going to miss lunch. Or on the flip side, just to organize religion. There's also organized religion. I don't know if anybody here knows that, but there's this thing called organized religion. Organized religion has no power. There's no power behind it. It's just a feel-good word, a feel-good message, raise your hands, maybe even oh, maybe even just pray in the Holy Ghost for just a minute, but then that's all. They cut people off because there's really meant to be more. There's really supposed to be power behind it or the laying on of hands or the fire of God, but they feel like, I don't want to offend people. I don't want to make people mad and leave my church. No, offend them. Let them go because then you'll be able to minister like you need to. I would rather people walk up and leave if they don't like what I'm saying because then I'll be able to get to where I'm going, okay? So you need to be in a church that's not afraid to move in the power of God. And I know this church is not one of them. I definitely know that. If I know anything about this church, I know that that's a fact. <laughs> and the members know that too. You need... Not only do you need to connect yourself to these people that I'm talking about, but you need to be that person too. You need to be that person too. You must be that person because you don't want to be the person on the other end where other people are like, I got to let you go because you're slowing me down. You're holding me back or you're speaking things that are not lining up with the word. You need to be that person too. Proverbs 13, 21 says, trouble chases sinners while blessings reward the righteous. Trouble chases the sinners, but blessings reward the righteous. So if you're a righteous person, walking in his ways, walking in his word, the blessings are chasing you. Hallelujah. God has a plan for blessings to track you down. I told the testimony last night, and if you weren't here, I'll tell it again quickly, about how I was in a service back last fall, and someone literally came up to me, found me in the service, and handed me a check with the exact amount of money that we were believing for. And on the pay-to order, it was blank. So they didn't even know my name. The Lord just spoke to them and saw me in the crowd and said, that's for that person over there. That's for that lady over there. Hallelujah. That's the blessings tracking you down. It says that surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's what that scripture means. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalms really quick. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. 
verse 1, it says, Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the new day sun. And then in verse 9, it says, For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Will possess the land. And speaking of land and property ownership, This building is a true testament of that. I don't know if you guys realize, but this building, this property is a true testament of that. They followed after the Lord, and then the Lord dropped this in their hands. It could have been to anybody else, but honestly, I think the other people didn't want it like they thought that they did. They, they didn't want it like that they thought that they, they might have desired it or whatever. But the Lord gave it to this church and gave it to this ministry, this pastor, because they truly desired what the Lord's plan was for them and their church. People think that you have to choose between having the fire of God and having the Holy Ghost and being, and being an organized person. They don't think that they can go together. <laughs> I know Ms. Victoria is shaking her head. She knows because that's what our pastor preaches. He talks about this. You don't have to be a, a dumb Holy Ghost filled person or an intelligent person void of spiritual power. People think that you have to choose from one to the other. But that's not the way that it works. You can have both and not pick between the two. You can be filled with the fire and the Holy Ghost and power and the evidence of speaking in other tongues and have an organized brain and be a normal person. That's not some crazy flaco weirdo person. You can be both of those things. Because God, you you know that God used people in the Bible in both ways too? There's actually many stories. I don't have time to read all of them today. But God used people in the Bible just like that. Joseph was one of them. He used Joseph. He was anointed, okay, without going into reading the whole story. He was anointed, and he had supernatural wisdom. And supernatural wisdom to not only interpret dreams, but after he presented the interpretation of the dream, he, he didn't stop there. He then went on to organize structure that this is how you need to do this with your life, and this is how you need to do that. And God, what's, what's amazing about this story is because of his obedience and because of the anointing on his life, God literally set him in front of one of the most powerful rulers of the earth in his time. And not only did he carry the anointing, but he had wisdom and supernatural structure to do it. Not only did he have the anointing on your life, and you know, I truly believe, I wasn't back there in those days, but I only know what his word says now. But I truly believe that because of the hand of the Lord on his life and his obedience, the Lord said, I'm going to take you over here because other people won't do it. Other people don't have what it takes, but you have what it takes. So this is what I'm going to do with you. I love this scripture because really, to me, this scripture represents that story. It says, Proverbs 18, 26, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. And we can even change that to a woman because that's a means woman too. A woman's gift makes room for her and brings her before great people. Hallelujah. And there's a gifting and a calling on each woman's life in here. You might not be called to be a pastor or an evangelist or a missionary or whatever. That's okay. That's fine. But he's called you to do something. He's called you to do something, and he can bring whatever he's called you to do. He can make you the best of it. He can make you the greatest at it. You might say, well, I just have a, a company where I just bake, bake, uh, bake goods at my home. Well, God can make you the best. He can make you the best in the area. You say, well, I just, I just do hair. I'm just a hairdresser. He can make you the best hairdresser that's anointed that every person that comes and sits in your chair is leaving filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what he can do. And if you refuse, and I, you know what? I, this is what I said at the beginning. I said that I'm called to, to preach to my generation and to set them free to let them know what they can have, to let them know what they can walk in. And so I refuse. I 
refuse, 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 refuse to watch my generation go to hell. I refuse to watch my generation go to hell because God has called me to take those people and to pull them out of the pit of hell and the reach and the hand that the enemy thought he had on them and to say, no, you are called and you are appointed and you are anointed by the hand of the Lord. He's called me and anointed me to rescue my generation and to impact them with the gospel of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to take you, like I talked about earlier, you might have come from a family that had stuff, you know, happening in a certain way, or a poverty background, or a poor background. You, he wants to take you today and put you into a new family. He wants to take you today and put you into a new family. His family, the kingdom of God is built on righteousness. It's built on wealth and health and prosperity and favor and victory. It says in his word, he takes us from glory to glory, strength to strength, victory to victory, faith to faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Do you know that your environment that you're in will actually keep you in poverty? Your environment that you're in will actually keep you in poverty. And what's crazy is God will actually, and I've seen this happen before and it breaks my heart, because God will actually deliver people out of poverty or out of something, and then they'll go right back to the old ways of doing things. They'll go right back into that lifestyle of poverty. They'll come into a service just like this, and God will deliver them, and then they'll go right back into what they were doing before. That's why it's so important, which what I was just talking about, who you're with, who you're connected to. That's why also it's so important that you're connected to a church that speaks the word of God, that does these things, that moves in the Holy ghost that has no restrictions if the lord tells them to do something you better believe they're going to do it they're not they're not backed by some dumb organization or some other ministerial association that's trying to tell them oh you can't do that don't say that don't preach like that don't pray for people don't lay your hands on people because haven't you heard of covid or whatever that people are trying to say today no your environment your environment will keep you in those bondages your environment will keep you in that poverty 1 John 4, 4 says, but you belong to God. You belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you realize that if your environment is poverty, you get filled up with the word and know who God calls you to be. Then you go to your environment and it says that you've already won victory over those people because you have the spirit who lives on the inside of you that's greater than the spirit that lives in the world. So you get set free here. You get set free in these meetings today and tonight. And then you leave and you go back to that environment that was poverty stricken, that's filled with lack, that's filled with garbage, and then you set them free. That's what the Lord has called you to do. You have to literally see God's blessing and God's favor that it's on you. You have to see it. Because if you don't see it yourself, you will never go to higher levels. If you don't see yourself on top, you're never going to reach the top. If you don't see yourself as, as going far past these things that are trying to hold you back, you're never going to. Deuteronomy 28, 13, it says, If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. He will make you the head and not the tail. And you will always be on top and never at the bottom. It didn't just say maybe you'll be on top if you're lucky or if you're this person, you'll be on top. It says, no, you will always be on the top. Always, always. Psalm 66, 12 says, you've allowed our enemies to prevail against us. We pass through the fire and the flood. Yet in the end, you always bring us out better than we were before, saturated with your goodness. And in another translation, I'm going to read this really quick because um, our, our new church building that we just got into at the very beginning of um, March, right? Yeah, we got into the very beginning of March. 
our new church building that we have, we literally just got in there a couple months ago. Praise the Lord. It's an amazing testimony. But we've, we actually call, we've called that church, um, obviously our church is the River Church Cincinnati, but we call the church, the name of the building is actually called the Wealthy Place. We've named that church the Wealthy Place because what it says in the King James, it says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou brought us into a wealthy place. So that's why I started this with saying, it doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter your background, who your mama is, who your daddy is, who your brother is, who your sister is. Because the Lord wants to take you. You may have gone through the fire. You may have gone through the water. But he has brought you out and to a wealthy place, to a place of abundance, to a place of prosperity, to a place of prospering. So let every generational curse that has tried to latch itself on you, just lift your hands in here this morning. Lift your hands in here, every single hand lifted. I thank you, Lord, that every single generational curse that has tried to latch itself on these women's life is broken today in the mighty name of Jesus. No more. Every lie of the enemy is broken. I break your hold right now in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Thank you, Jesus. Let every curse, every generational curse turn into a generational blessing. Turn into a generational blessing. There are lives being turned around right now because of the blessing of the Lord, because of the favor of the Lord, because of his blessing on their lives in the name of Jesus. For the ones that choose to walk in it are going to walk in it. But the ones that choose to sit in their seat with their arms folded, with a frown, are never going to walk in it, are never going to walk in the fullness of what the Lord has. But the ones that say, Lord, I'm going to receive it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to have that. I'm going to walk in that life. I'm going to be that person. I'm going to be that woman. They are going to have it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ha ha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ha ha. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your generational blessing, for your cycle of blessing. Ha ha. Thank you, Jesus. Ha ha. Whoo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ha ha. I, I know out of this weekend is going to come some of the biggest givers in this church are going to turn into some of the women in this room. Women that are, that are business owners, women that are single moms, women that are widows are going to turn to be some of the biggest givers in this church. You just watch. If that's what you want, the Lord's going to do it for you. If that's what you want, the Lord's going to do it for you. Hallelujah. And you know what? It's funny because I hear sometimes women say, well, my husband's not saved. Or my husband's not in agreement with me. He doesn't, he doesn't, um, he doesn't believe in seed time and harvest and sowing. And, but you know what? From those, those times and those testimonies that I've heard of women that have said that, the Lord has literally given them, them, not their husband, because you want to be in agreement with your husband. You want to be respectful to him, right? He's the head over your house. But the, the Lord has literally given those women in this specific circumstances business ideas where they're literally being blessed by their own business, not tied to anything that their husband does or anything of their family income, giving them a business or blessing them, and then they're able to take that money and then sow it and then tithe it. And it's like all of a sudden, because of that, then their husband would notice what's going on. How are you giving a $1,000 checks personally out of your business? business account. What's going on here? How come we're getting checks in the mail? How come people are coming up to me, handing me wads of cash? How, how come people are stopping you in the grocery store saying, oh, can I, can I give this to you? Can I bless you with this? So just because, don't let the enemy try to trick you. Don't let him try to hold you back and say, oh, well, you can't do that because your husband's on an agreement. Say, Lord, you're going to bless me some way, so you show me how you're going to bless me, and I'm going to do it. So the Lord will literally, if you want to be blessed like 
like that. If you want to walk in those ways, he will literally, I truly believe, he will bless you so that you can give and then you can show him. And then maybe it is the case where he's not saved and he's not a believer. But because of the blessing and the hand of God upon your life, he is going to come to the Lord from it. I'm telling you today, he's going to. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, like I said at the beginning, so many people will hear a message or they'll just try to write down and fill up a notebook. And they'll hear a message and they'll think, oh, well, yeah, that was good or whatever. No, let this word go deep into you. Let it go deep into your hearts. And this whole entire weekend, let it go deep into your hearts and in your spirits where you leave here and on your way home and on your way out the door, you're still thinking about it. And it's still in you and you're, and you're still hungering after those things. Let that be how you live your life. Don't let it just be a message that you hear today and it's gone tomorrow. Let this message, let these messages change the course of the direction of your life. Because that's what the word of God did for me. I went to Bible school, okay? I grew up in church, but you can even ask my parents. I didn't always speak like this, but I had to let the Lord, I had to allow the Lord to use me. Because I could be quiet and sit back and just do whatever I thought was good, or I could do what the Lord had his plan for my life. And that's a whole lot better than anything that I could try to do. That's a whole lot better than anything that I think sounds good or feels good or whatever. And there's, I know, I'm just going to end it with this before we give you an opportunity to sow your seed. But there's other women that aren't here. I know some people have work or whatever their circumstances are. But there's still one more session tonight. And there's other people, other women specifically. Maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe it's your roommate, your sisters, your mom, people that you go to school with, work with, whatever, that you know need to be in here, need this. They need specifically a touch from the Lord. Maybe their life is going one way one way. And it's like if they, don't, if they don't have a touch from the Lord, then something's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, but it doesn't seem good. Bring them tonight. Say, I will pick you up. I will send an Uber to your house. I will do whatever it takes to get you in this room. Because in Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood, you know, I know you guys in here that go to this church know this story. But the woman with the issue of blood, she literally had everything against her. Everything in the natural was trying to come against her and to tell her that she wasn't going to be healed, that she couldn't go, that she couldn't be there because there was thousands upon thousands of people. But her faith was if I go, I know that if I just merely touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to receive exactly what I need. So let that be the, the story and the message that drives you tonight to bring people here. All people might need is just one touch. One touch and they will be totally set free from whatever it is that they're dealing with. Maybe they've never been in services like this. They need the joy of the Lord. They need the fire of God. They need to know that they can literally give their way out of poverty. Bring them here tonight and then bring them back on Sunday morning too. They didn't ask me to say this, but I know, I know the importance of being in a church and being under leadership that follows the Lord and follows the Holy Ghost and is obedient to that. And I know that as I'm talking about this, there's someone specifically, or maybe it's more than one person that's coming to your mind that you know needs to be here. You know needs this. Do not disobey the Lord. You know, Miss Victoria talked about last night a couple times where the Lord told her to do something and she didn't obey. Do not disobey the Lord. If he's putting that person or those people on your heart for a reason, it's for a reason. It's because they need this. And don't think either because this is uh, the enemy will also try to tell you, oh, well, they go to another church. Oh, well, you know, they told you they can't come. All you have to do is be the vessel. All you have to do is send the message. All you have to do is pick up the phone. If they say, I can't come, then it's on them, and it's between them and the Lord. But you have to do what you need to do first, okay? So be obedient to that. I'm just going to leave it at that. Amen. And it's going to be an awesome rest of the service tonight and um, or today. Well, I don't even know what it is. It feels like night in here because there's no windows. <laughs> this morning and tonight. Hallelujah. Miss Clara. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Pastor Jordan. So good. Amen. Wow. That's so good. 
So right now we're going to give you an opportunity to sow seed. This is, you know, when we sow seed, God gives it right back. It, I can't tell you how many times God has proven himself to me over and over and over and over. Praise God. He's so good, right? All right. So if you have our app, you can give on the app. Um, if you do Cash App, Life Revolution is our uh, the cash tag there. Um, we have PayPal and Venmo, both of those. Um, what do they call those? Handles. We'll just call them handles. Is that what they call? Is that what they call? Thanks, Amy. At Life Rev Church. Okay. Not Life Revolution, but at Life Rev Church. Okay. And we do have our website as well, Life Revolution dot church backslash give. If you're giving by cash um, or check, go ahead and you can use an envelope. Um, ladies, if you're on the front row, of course, we have Miss Jenna and Miss Kirby helping out. Thank you, ladies. You're so appreciated. And then there are envelopes in the back of the seats uh, that should be in front of you. If there's not one, we'll get those refilled. Uh, for you guys. Praise God. God is so good, isn't he? And then, of course, our um, address, if you need to move some money around in some accounts, because I know we've had some people do that um, for the church, praise God. You can always mail in a check or cashier's check if that's what you need to do. P.O. Box 3163, Broken Arrow, 74013. God is so good. God is so good. His presence is so sweet this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Tammy's going to come and pray for the offering. Father, we thank you this morning for every gift here. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that every seed is received in heaven today, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that it is sown on good ground. I thank you, Father, that everyone who gives liberally, who gives generously, just like your word says, Lord, that you will liberally supply. You will liberally supply to the full. And I thank you, Lord, that every need that they have will not go unmet, but it will be met in the name of Jesus. Father, you said to prove you. And, Father, we prove you this morning by trusting in your word, by sowing our seed unto you, Lord, by sowing it into good ground, by sowing it cheerfully with our hearts open to you, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, for the blessing. We thank you that the windows of heaven are opening to us right now, Lord, pouring out a blessing that we're not even able to contain or receive. But, Father, we're so blessed that we are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you, Father, for the generosity of you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you care so much about us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet this morning and let's worship him. Let's worship him as we sow our seed, as we give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I speak increase into their life. Increase right now. Blessing of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just this morning, lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive the goodness of you. I receive the blessing of the Lord. I receive all that you have, all that heaven has, Lord. I receive it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Everything I touch prospers. Everything I give to you, Lord, that you bless, you anoint. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Bye. 
that you've given us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Such a beautiful presence of the Lord. Such a beautiful presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Magnify you, Jesus. I'm going to just share with you for a little bit, not very long, just for a little bit. You can have your seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke twenty two twenty, 20, it talks about we are covenant women, and that's what this ministry is, is covenant women. That means God has a, given us a promise. He's given us a promise that he will never break, and we take it. We take that promise, and we stand in that promise, and we walk in that promise, and when we do that, we are in covenant with him when we receive what he's done for us. Luke twenty two twenty 20, in the NLT, it says, this cup 
is the new covenant between God and his people. Let's see, I'm going to try and read it up there. Is that 22? Is that the NLT? Let me read from mine. <laughs> That's funny. Tell me in different versions. I have the NLT. Does anybody else have the NLT? Okay. Okay, it's up there. Glory to God. Jesus. This cup, yes, okay, so I had written some other notes, okay, so I wanted to make sure I didn't get off from that. It says, Luke twenty two twenty. this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. It's an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. So this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. It's an agreement. It's confirmed with his blood, which is poured out for us. It's poured out for us. He gave it to us, that covenant. It's to all. It's for all to, to receive, and it's for all who will receive his salvation, and they, those that choose to walk in his blessing of that covenant. That covenant contains peace. It's joy. It's health. It's in your body. It's provision, yes, your financial needs, whatever you need. It's safety. It's that you will be fruitful in everything that you do, fruitful. And not just be fruitful, but you will multiply. You will continue to multiply, continue to increase, hallelujah, operating in abundance, just as she was ministering a little bit ago. No lack for anything, but always supplied, you know, and that makes your mind, sometimes it makes your mind think, well, how? Because you live on this earth. You walk in a natural, you live in a natural body, you know, but you know what? You are spirit beings. So he made his word to be received by us because we are a spirit with him. So his words aren't just words on a page, but they're actually spirit and life. He says, my words are spirit and life, but it's only spirit and life to those who receive those words, to those words that he said, those promises that he's given us. So he expects us to live in abundance, always being supplied. But we can't obtain that. We can't obtain that until we say, Lord, I take that. I take that. And some people have, you know, some people read the word of God and they say, I take that, but they don't really take it. They're just, their mouths are just moving and they say it and their heart wants to agree with it, but they don't really, really do it because there's sometimes things that God will show us that we have to do to walk in his covenant, to walk in spirit and life and in the blessing of the Lord. And so sometimes if it's something that comes to us that we're supposed to do, you know, we were like, well, no, God's just going to do it. He's just going to, he's just going to make it happen. Well, he will after he gives us steps because we live on this earth. So there are things that we do, but his covenant is free and it's an agreement that we have with him and he will in it and it is forever. Deuteronomy 28 verses one through eight. Can we read that? Hallelujah. It says, if you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully keep all his commands that I am giving you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. Is there another verse? Or, okay, let's go ahead and read the second verse. You will experience all the blessings if you obey. If you obey the Lord your God. Hallelujah. So I want the blessing of the Lord. I know that you want the blessing of the Lord. He's given it. You don't have to obtain it. You don't have to try to work for it. He's already given it to us. Hallelujah. But we are covenant women, and that's what I wanted to just start off with those scriptures because that is what this is about. We live in a new covenant, and so many women these days are living beneath their, their means. They're living beneath their, poten their potential. They're living beneath because they, they live according to everything that the world is saying, everything the world is doing. And there's so much more. There's so much more. So take that and receive it in the name of Jesus and, and don't let go of it. He said, don't let go of my promises. All right. Hallelujah. So that's what we are. And I just want to say that if, if you aren't hooked up into a great church, I'm just going to say this, if you aren't hooked up in a great church, you might go to church. But if it's not a great church like 
Pastor Jordan said, that's on fire, that's actually living the word, and it's challenging you to live the word and to see the promises of God in your life, get into a great church. And this is a great church. Hallelujah. This is a great church. We speak the word, we believe the word, and we see the word of God come to pass in our life, and we will see it in your life too. You will see it. You will live in abundance. You will not lack. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You will go to new places in God. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? We were, this conference is about surrender, and surrender always requires action. It requires our will coming into the line with his will, our plans coming into line with his plans, our ways coming into line with his ways. He says, your ways are not my ways. Your plans are not my plans. Yes, that's what his word says. And our dreams, giving them to God, even as Pastor Jordan said last night, you know, we, don't, we shouldn't tell our kids that you can do whatever you want to do. You can be whatever you want to be. Because that's what, that's whatever the, maybe the world, that might be tainted by whatever the world says or the world wants us to do. Or maybe you have a special talent that you're really good at. And so you think, well, I'll just do, I'll excel in this, ta this talent and this is what I was created to do. But that's not always the case. There's many things that we, are, we can excel in, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's God's plan for us to thrive in this earth according to his plan. Because his plan is always attached to his people, to people on the earth. And his plan is for people to be set free. So even if, even if it was a hairdresser, let's just say, that's not standing behind a pulpit and ministering, you know, as pastors or ministers like that. But, yes, you do. You have a, you have a pulpit right there when you have customers that, are, that you can speak to. So God will always require us to do something to reach other people. So whatever God says, you know, it's always going to be attached to his plan for his kingdom to be established in this earth and for his plan for people to know the Lord and to walk with the Lord. So it takes us surrender, surrendering our will, our plans, our dreams, whatever we, you know, would think that this is what I should do or this is what I've been created to. No, we tell our kids, and this is the way we should think. It's not what we can do but it's what God has for us. You can do and you can be anything that God has for you, that God's created you to be, because that's the only thing that will really give you true success. That's the only thing when you walk in the plan and the will of God is the only thing that's going to bring you true success, true fulfillment inside of you, and the true blessing of the Lord. That's when you're not going to walk in lack. That's when you're going to walk in abundance is when you are only doing everything that God wants you to do. Not what you want to do, but what God says to do. So it's surrendering our will, our plans, our dreams to his. And at first, it might not be comfortable. But you know what? Then you realize as soon as you walk into the God's plan, it becomes so satisfying, so fulfilling, so wonderful, so wonderful and, you know, there are times, because we live in a natural body, there are times where your flesh might scream. Your flesh might say, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. It's okay. That's just your flesh. You tell your flesh to shut up. You tell your flesh that it will submit to the plan of God and the will of God because God will always make it possible for us. He will always make a way for us. Amen? Hallelujah. So when we surrender to him, we tell our flesh to shut up. And we say, Lord, we're going to do it. We're going to do what you say. We don't listen to our mind. We don't listen to what our mind says. It says, Matthew 6, it says, seek first the kingdom of God. Right? Seek first. That means before anything else, we seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness will be added to us. Hallelujah. Psalm 37. Let's turn to there. Uh, okay, now we're in Matthew. <laughs> Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. When you live it, not just, not just speak it, but you live it too. Not just read it, but you speak it and you live it. All of those. Amen? Yes, and he will give you everything you need. Then Psalm 37, verses 3 and 4. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. 
Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Then you will. Trusting in him. After you trust in him. That means that that's part of surrender too. It's trusting in God. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3. Let's read that. Proverbs 3, verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. That means your understanding is your mind trying to figure it out. How many times do we try to figure something out? We try to say, well, I got I to gotta figure out, you know, God's going to show me. He's going to show. Well, he will show you, but you got to first read his word. You got to speak his word. Then you've got to thank him for his word, that his word is planted on the inside of you. You have the mind of Christ. And if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because then after you read the word of God, then you can pray in the Holy Ghost. And he gives your heart and your mind understanding. He makes it make sense to you after you start doing his will. Hallelujah. Yes. So we seek his will in everything. God is the only one that we can surrender to. He's the only one we can surrender to and not be in bondage to something or someone. He's the only one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we began, I just want to uh, give a quick little story about when we began this church, uh, planted this church. We didn't plant it actually in the heart of Tulsa. We planted it in Owasso because that is where God showed us. We had prayed for a year before we ever uh, started the church. And um, we had started praying in Tulsa about a year before. But before, right even before that, we had, we thought, well, we're not going to, we knew God was placing it in our heart to plant a church, but we felt in our minds, our natural understanding, it would never be in Oklahoma. So we said, well, it's not going to be in Oklahoma because some people would ask, uh, when are you going to start your church? And we were like, well, I don't know if you're ready to move because it's not going to be here. (laughs) It's going to be maybe Texas or Florida or Louisiana. Those are places that we actually searched for like over a year demographically try to just and we thought well the lord will bless us you know bless the work that we're doing and he's called us to do this but it felt uncomfortable for us to start it here i will just say because we had been on staff at another church locally and um, we had been there for a number of years and um, ministered and so for us it wasn't as big of a deal as we felt like it would be for some of them and so we chose, we thought, we, we don't want to make it uncomfortable for them and any weirdness between us and them. So we thought, well, God, God would not call us to begin any kind of a work here. Um, and so we just kind of took that out of our mind, out of our understanding. And so we, uh, then we started praying. Every week we, gra- we gathered just a few, a handful of few people, and we started praying. These were some of the people that kept asking, when are you going to start a church? So we thought, all right, so... We knew that they were with us, so we literally just a handful. A couple of them were these ladies right here on the end. <laughs> They're awesome. But um, we started praying faithfully every week on a Wednesday night, and we, would, we met in the library, and we started praying. And um, the more we started praying, we kept feeling like we were hitting a wall because we were, we were like, it's not in Texas. It's not in Louisiana. It's not in Florida. Okay, we were like, okay, it felt like we were supposed to do something here, but we were like, no, that can't be right. That can't be right. We are like, okay, maybe Oklahoma City, Lord, Oklahoma City. Nope, that, that felt just as wrong as anywhere else. And so it was our anniversary night, and we were getting ready to go out to dinner. And I was getting ready, and the Lord was speaking to my husband, and he said, your will will always be louder than my voice. Let me make sure I get this right. The voice of your will will always be louder than my voice and my will if you haven't submitted your will to me. Because we always kept saying, well, it'll not, it will not, it will not, it will never be, it will not, it will not. Because we'd already had it made up in our understanding, in our mind, that it would not be here. And um, he said that, he spoke that to him. The voice of your will will always be louder than my voice and my will if you haven't submitted your will to me. And so at that moment, he was like, oh, Lord, I repent and I submit my will to yours. And so we went, uh, went out to eat and he's like, where, where do you want to go? And I said, well, let's go somewhere else where maybe we won't meet other people that we know. So we just decided randomly to start driving towards Owasso. And so we started driving that way, and um, when we, we were driving around in there, 
we were talking about what God said, and uh, I was like, wow. And all of a sudden, it was just like, I said, this is it. This is where we're supposed to start. This is where we're supposed to plant this church. We're supposed to start it right here. And he said, right here? And I said, yes, in this city. I said, it doesn't make sense, but, but we are. And he was like, okay. And he said, the Holy Ghost rushes just started coming up and down, up and down, up and down. And so we started, there's a kind of a long story. We started looking for a place and uh, we started naturally looking for a place where a lot of churches start, like in a school auditorium or a hotel. None of those things seemed to work out, but the Lord spoke to us to look out of the box. And so we were like, what does that mean? And so as we were driving through the city, we were driving um, past the bank with the great big beautiful glass bank there, First Bank of Owasso. And I looked over and I said, and I never even had this thought in my mind ever before. We were just driving by and I said, what about that place? And he was like, what? And I said, the bank. He said, a bank to meet in, to start in a bank? And I said, I don't know. That's out of the box to me. And he's like, well, that would never work because banks are closed on Sunday. So they wouldn't even be unlocking their doors for us. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's probably not it. And so I dismissed it. And then we went to have a meeting with someone else about, you know, an auditorium that made it sound like it was available. And then when we went to meet, she said, no, we're doing construction, so it's not going to work, and blah, blah, blah. So before we left the city that day, he said, let's go meet the president of the bank. I just want I've heard he's a Christian man. He's influential, and I want to just let him know our plans, introduce ourselves. Maybe he knows of a place. I said, okay. So we, we went in there to meet him, and uh, within just a few minutes of telling him our heart and what we had that God put in our hearts, he said, there's a room here in the bank. He goes, would you like to use it? He said, another church actually meets there right now. It's a community room. He said, but you can, uh, they're going to be moving out within just a couple of weeks, and you guys can start in here for free. I would just donate that to you. And it was uh, their whole community room and another couple little classroom office areas and their, their um, cafe area we used for somewhat for children's and things like that. And um, he, he said, can I show it to you? And we were looking at each other like, I was like, well, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so we went and looked at it. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, he, was, he, he said, y'all can take over it in two weeks or whatever. So that really spoke to us because sometimes my husband says, sometimes men think so rationally and naturally that, you know, that's not going to work. And, uh, but the Holy Ghost sometimes will speak to women that will, will say things because I never had premeditated any of that. And so... The moment that we submitted our ideas, our thoughts, our understanding to his plan, then the doors started opening, and, and it was just amazing. And um, so the voice of your will will always be louder than my voice and my will if you haven't submitted your will to me, he said. So praise the Lord. We, we submitted, and he started turning things around. And um, I want to read out of 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. Hallelujah. Talks about an anointing that he's given us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us, he illuminates our minds, and he guards us from error. Hallelujah. That Holy Spirit within us, he guards us from error. Praise the Lord. Verse 27, it says, the anointing, the special gift, the preparation which you have received from him, it will remain in you permanently. Permanently in you. Put your hands on, the, on your stomach, the center of your being, and just say, in me, the Spirit of God resides. And that anointing, that special gift, that prepares me. For what God has called me to do remains in me permanently, permanently. Yes, and when you pray in the Holy Ghost, those things that God has already specially gifted you for, prepared for you, 
will come to pass. They will come into understanding, and you will begin to see what God's plan is. You will begin to see and understand with your mind even what God's purpose is, what his plan is. So it keeps us from getting into error. It keeps us from being deceived. Deception was meant to steal your destiny and bury your dreams. That's what de deception is for, error. It's meant to steal your destiny and bury your dreams. And, you, you know, I was speaking about your dreams, but I'm talking about the dreams that God has put in you. Because once you commit your way to the Lord, once you commit your way and you surrender everything you have to his will, and even if it's something that doesn't make sense to your plan or your mind or your understanding, but you say, yes, Lord, I surrender it to you. As soon as you do that and you begin to walk in it, knowing that he's prepared you, he's anointed you, he's gifted you, that means he's going to supply every need that you have for that thing, for that thing. He will take care of you. You know that it's, gonna, it's not going to leave. It's in you, and he will not allow you to lack. Hallelujah. You say, how do I keep from getting into error? How do I keep from being, de get de uh, being deceived? You get away from the truth of God's word. You, you slack and you don't keep reading God's word. You don't keep speaking it because you've got to read it daily, speak it daily, and you've got to act on it. Walk it out daily. Amen? You've got to pray in the spirit and other tongues daily. You won't walk out what you don't pray out. It's so important that you pray in the Holy Ghost because you've got to walk out the plan of God for your life. That's where the blessing is. Hallelujah. The word of God is your anchor, and the Holy Spirit is your compass. If you know what an anchor is, an anchor is usually a strong piece of metal. It's attached to a ship or a boat, and it, it goes deep into the seabed to hold the boat or the ship secure and to keep it from going any, anywhere. So it digs like a deep, deep down trench into the sea, and it holds it there. It anchors it. The word of God is your anchor. The word of God is your anchor, and the Holy Spirit is your compass. A compass is a device that indicates direction. It shows you the way that you're going, and it keeps you from getting into error. One of the most important instruments for navigation is a compass. It tells you what direction you're headed at all times. Hallelujah. And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our compass. So the word of God is our anchor. We read his word. We speak his word. We obey his word, and we pray in the Holy Ghost, and his Holy Ghost is, gives us direction. It shows us the way we're going, and if we start to get off a little place or, or you know, somebody says, well, you need to do this or you ought to do that, well, you know what? Check the word of God. Check the word of God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Speak the word of God. Just go back to that. Just say, well, that sounds good, but let's see. What does your word say? What is your plans for me? His word says in Jeremiah 29, 11, my plans are to prosper you, to give you health, to give you a future. Amen. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. A hope. A hope means something that's not going to fail, right? It's the opposite of that. He's given you something that will not fail. Hallelujah. So when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we're praying out the perfect will of God. We're praying out the perfect purposes and plans of God, and that is our compass. He will always lead us and guide us, and he will help us if we start to get off. Amen? Praise the Lord. Um, I think I skipped over to a piece page here. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Glory to God. So that was about it. That it. But anyway, I just wanted to share those things about the word of God and the Holy Spirit because it's surrendering our will to his, surrendering our plans to his plan and saying, Lord, whatever you say, I will do. Whatever you say, whatever you direct me, not the way maybe all my friends are going or, or the way the crowd is going or, or it just seems to be the popular thing. God has, you got to get away from that. You've got to get away from it because God, that's, that, that is many times meant to set you on a whole nother course. Because sometimes just the way the crowd's going doesn't mean that that's where the blessing is. Just because people, because people follow, they say crowds follow crowds. Well, it's true. 
Like if you've ever been, um, you've ever thought of going to a restaurant, and so you're like, well, I want to go to someplace different. So someone tells you about this little restaurant, a hole in the wall maybe, and you drive up to it, and you're like, oh, I don't know about this. It looks like cockroaches could be in there. (laughs) But you see all these cars parked out there, and you're like, well, that's a good sign. Everybody must think it tastes pretty good. So sometimes we go by that, right? We go by, well, there's looks like people are, <laughs> you know, and then you go in there and you have the best catfish you've ever had or the best tacos you've ever had. <laughs> yeah, amen. But you can't always go by that. You can't. You can't always go by that. Sometimes, obviously, where, you know, God is doing something, you know, there will be a crowd, you know, of people, there will be fruit, and it will last. That's how you know if God is in it, is that there is lasting fruit. People's lives are being changed. People are, are being set free from every bit of darkness that, that the enemy has bound them f- uh, from. And that they're, they're, you're seeing change in their life. And then they want to go and see other people saved. They want to reach out and see other people's lives changed, just like God changed their lives. If you go to church with other people that don't really think about other people like that, and they don't really, I mean, they want to change on the outside, but the inside, you can pretty much tell that they haven't changed anything, that, and they don't really talk, you know, with joy and excitement and really believe in, in God and, and the things that God promises them. If they don't talk about the word of God, they're not speaking about it, and then you don't see fruit in their life, then they're not, they're not being a fruitful Christian. The word of God expects us as believers to get saved, to get changed, to get transformed, and then want to go out and get other people saved, set free, transformed, to a new way of thinking, to get them set free, and then to see, to lay hands on them and see the power of God move in their life and see change. Hallelujah. Yes, not just through our hands, but through your hands. To speak to your friends, to your, your, your clients or whoever it is that you work with, people that you meet, to speak to them and to speak to them boldly. The word of God says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The word of God is power. The word of God is power. So when you speak it to someone else, you know that there's going to be corresponding action. There's going to be results. There's going to be fruit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So if you don't go, if you don't have friends that are speaking the word of God, you don't see change in their life, and they're not filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and power, then I'd get some new friends. I'd go to another church, honestly, because you've got to be built up to go out and to do that, to win other people for Jesus. Hallelujah. To see lasting change. And when you go to church, you're like, I feel so much better than I did when I first came in here. Yes, I feel so much better. I feel lifted up. I feel refreshed. I feel strengthened. I feel like they didn't quench the Holy Spirit. They weren't in a hurry to to get out so we could get to our favorite restaurant. I'm I'm so refreshed. I'm so strengthened. Hallelujah, because the word says that in the presence of the Lord, there's refreshing, there's strengthening, and that's what we need. We got to be equipped. We got to be strengthened and refreshed to do the works of Christ. We've got to, because if you're just going for a short little time, if you don't have friends that are going to sharpen the word of God with you and keep you on track and say, if they hear something come out of your mouth that doesn't line up with the word of God, just say, hey, sister, watch it there, watch it there. If you don't have friends that will do that to you, then I get some new friends. They're really not your friend. They're really not. So we've got to sharpen each other. We've got to help each other. We've got to strengthen each other. And if, if you hear something that's not holy, it's not wholesome, it's not, it's not uh, lifting up to someone else around you, if it isn't, then that's not of God. That's a devil. He's trying to draw a wedge in there. You know, the devil's main purpose, even if you come to church, is to get you in all in a, a tight wad before you even reach your car. That's his purpose because he wants you to get all twisted about something. Somebody didn't say something the right way or somebody looked at you funny or somebody expected you to do something that you didn't do and, um, you know, and you're all upset about it. But you know what? That's the devil's main purpose because if he can get you to dwell on that 
and get offended and get upset, then his plan is working because you won't feel like going back, right? And that's part of him quenching the spirit of God and part of him taking back what God gave you for God's purpose to see you excel and to see you fruitful and blessed. Hallelujah. So we're going to surrender our will. Amen. We're going to say, God, whatever you say, God, I want to be in a place every day of my life, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, where you can speak to me, Lord, where I'm sharpened, where I'm challenged in the word of God, where I grow, Father, and I have brothers and sisters and friends who love me and support me and who want to see other people change, Lord, just like you changed me. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, stand to your feet and let's lift our hands to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We surrender to you today. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives today. Speak to us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, receive everything that he has for you today. Receive it. Hallelujah. His power and his anointing is inside of you. He specially gifted you. He specially prepared you for this day, for this moment, for this time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm walking in the freedom of Jesus. I'm walking in the goodness of the Lord. Yes, you hear me, Lord, and you supply my every desire. You supply my every need. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I've asked her to to sing a special song that she's going to sing. Thank you, Jesus. There's a pot of gold at the end of your rainbow. If your life is filled with his plans, not your own.
a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. If your life is filled with his plans, not your own. <laughs> Lay down your all and serve him. Lift up your hands and worship you. say something here real quick. You know, years ago, I was running a school, a ministry school for young kids, and um, but I had gone to the building that we were in, and I heard the Lord say, there's a pot of gold, and I thought, what the Lord, what on earth was that? What do you want me to do with that? And I had no idea <laughs> that this song was going to come out, so I just remember going to the keyboard, and I thought, there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow okay whatever I really had no idea it's kind of like she's talking about you got to kind of put one foot in front of the other and then something comes out that you didn't plan you didn't expect there's no one who could have prepared me or even given me a clue of what that was going to be and all of a sudden and I just say that because God knew I was going to be here he knew I was going to be here today, and he gave me the song. If he gave it to me just for you, Tammy, I love that, because I love you. So here we go. There's a pot. There's a pot of gold at the end of your rainbow. If your life is filled with his plans, not your own. Lay down your all and serve him. Lift up your hands and worship you. All God promised indeed. Turn your eyes towards Him. Turn your eyes towards Him. He'll show you things you never seen. Give you power to rise above circumstances even seen. Lay down your all and serve Him. Lift up your hands and worship you. gonna sing it with attitude give up your own plans give up your own plans give up your own ways turn over everything and let him lead come on let him lead give up your own plans give up your own ways turn over everything and let him lead and let him lead give up your Give up your own ways. Turn over everything and let him lead and let him lead. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. Do you have anything else? No, I'm good. Thank okay. You. That is beautiful. I love it. So we were talking about. Um, you know, maybe a song that would fit with Surrender, and she, and I met her over here the other day, um, and we went over some songs, and I said, she goes, this one song, you know, and I said, I love that, that'll work perfectly. So, funny story is, uh, she was telling me just a little snippet that the other day, or sometime, I don't know, it was not too long ago, that the Lord had spoke full circle. Yeah, she didn't know what that meant. Well, this is an interesting story, so she used to pastor in Palm Springs, California, where I was there on staff at the church at that time. And I had just had my daughter, Jordan. And um, we celebrated her first birthday there. And she was the pastors, uh, she and her husband were the pastors of the church, like she said, like she said, you know, we were both pastors. They pastored the church, and so sh her kids were at her birthday party when she turned one. And um, just is interesting. And I haven't even seen her. I saw her one time when we were on staff at, at Rama. Uh, one time, I think, very briefly, you were there visiting for something. Uh, but it was just like after a midweek service or something. I don't even remember really any of the details, but I just ba briefly spoke to her. That's the first time I've seen her in all of these years, nearly 30 years. So it's interesting. And I saw on Facebook the other day, uh, a couple weeks ago, that she had just moved here with her daughter and family. And uh, so she's like, I don't know what God's doing. 
But she's like, I know that God said it's okay. I'm supposed to move, move here with my family. And so I, I had coffee with her, and we just, of course, we have a lot of history. And so we got to talking and everything. And so it was just wonderful. And I shared about the conference, and I said, would you like to help me and, and to do some of the worship? So she's beautiful. She's uh, very anointed and gifted of the Lord. She's prophetic. Hallelujah. So I'm so glad you're here. So thankful for her. But praise the Lord. So, yeah, that's a, that's a whole other story that I will share some other time, too, because that was years ago I was married to someone else besides Pastor Jay because we've been married 25 years in May. Yes. But I had a terrible situation my first marriage. But God transformed my life. And there was such a time where I was literally suicidal. I could not deal with all the things that I found out about this person that he had been hiding for years. And I had no idea. I, my mom took me for a drive. I wanted to jump out of the car and just end it. I, I could not even imagine facing another day. And my parents were pastors at the time, and they were in revival. And I had the choice to stay home or to go to those services and to be immersed in the anointing and the Spirit of God. And I chose to be in every night. There was like seven weeks of revival. I mean, it was awesome. And I chose to be there. And I know that I know that I know that it was me surrendering my plans, my will, my thoughts, my ideas, my hurts, everything. And I chose to be in the presence of God and where the power of God was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She was just a little bitty girl at that time. So this was after we had left California, and she was only about three. And there's so much junk that I walked through. But God, because I chose to not walk away from him, I chose to not end my life and end the unborn child's life because I surrendered my will and my plan. You know, there's things a minister came and he spoke to me during those meetings. I was on the floor saturated by the presence of God because that's where he wants to do a lot of his surgery, his work on us internally. It's just by just being laid out in his presence. Oh, and, and the minister spoke and said, and actually it was Brother Richard Moore, and he said, those things that have happened to you in your life will be like a faded memory. You won't even be able to remember some of them. And that is the gospel. That is the truth. It's not the gospel, but it's true. <laughs> it is true. There's so many things that I, and I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. All because, Lord, I chose not myself, not my hurts, not my whole world came crashing down. Really, I just was like, Lord, there's got to be more. I was raised in a good family. I was raised in, you know, with good parents and, and um, pastors that really, you know, love God. And I'm like, this can't be your will. This can't be your plan. I know the enemy had plans for my disaster, but his word says I, my plans for you are for your good. And I'm like, Lord, I want to know the good. I want to know. I want to know what you have for me. So from that day on, I know that God just started putting everything in motion. And here I am. Here I am. Praise God. And look at her. Well, she was a normal kid. She was a normal teenager. You know, I had to keep after her to clean her room like we do Cassidy. <laughs> she had her friends. She's had her quirky things and stuff. But you know what? She's always loved God. She's always served God. She's a normal kid, but she always loved God, and she always served God. She's never always preached. It was my plan for her to always to grow up and to sing and to worship, you know, but she never really wanted to do that. And then one time when she was 13, she came home from youth camp, and she's like, guess what? The Lord's calling me to be a worship leader. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so she started pursuing that, and um, she really couldn't even hear harmonies and stuff, but she trained her ear by the power of the Lord because she said, Lord, I believe that you want me to learn this. And so she learned supernaturally to hear parts. The Lord helped her to hear that. She could not hear those parts before. And she, to this day, she leads worship with her husband at, at their church. And she's powerful. But she's an anointed speaker and preacher of the word of God. I'm so thankful and grateful because she chose. She had to choose one day. No, she was going to, uh, she had a sewing machine that we bought her for her graduation at high school. And she wanted to be a fashion designer. And so, and she used to draw fashion stuff all the time. 
And so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But in my heart, I never said, well, you can't do that. But in my heart, I just kept praying and surrendering it to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, she's your child. I believe you've got bigger, better plans and purposes for her. But you're going to show her, Lord. I'm not going to argue with her. And we never argued about it. But I I was just not going to get into a thing about it with her. I just was like, okay, well, praise the Lord. (laughs) And then... Little by little, step by step, we just kept training her in the Lord and, and uh, raising her. And she grew up and she went to Rama. She graduated Rama. And right after graduation at Rama, she decided, God's moving me to Florida, Mom and Dad. We were like, what? But my heart was prepared for it and I wasn't devastated. I didn't want to see her go. But boy, you know, from that point on, she went to Florida to Pastor Rodney's ministry and just even even began to flourish even more. And so I'm so grateful and thankful. So when we surrender to him, his, his plans, are, his purposes are for a fulfillment. Amen. For fulfillment, for blessing. Hallelujah. For increase, for joy, for strength, and to see everybody around us encounter the same thing to encounter the same thing hallelujah so i love you ladies i'm so thankful that you ladies chose to be here today it's been so wonderful